<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Today we want to extend the concept of Hooke's law to three-dimensional elements. I'm going to briefly review the concept of Hooke's law that we learned at the beginning of mechanics of materials. Then we are going to extend that into three-dimensional problems. First of all, let's start with the relationship between normal stress and normal strain. Sigma is equal to E multiplied by epsilon. Epsilon is normal strain. E is modulus of elasticity. And sigma is normal stress. The relationship between stress and strain is described by a constant number, which is called modulus of elasticity. Also, there was another property that we called it Poisson's effect. As you can see, the element is stretching in the longitudinal direction, but also in the lateral direction, it is getting shorter. And that property was described by a constant number, which is Poisson's ratio, and that is simply lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain. Longitudinal strain is strain in the direction of the applied force. In this case, it is horizontal. And lateral strain is any strain perpendicular to that, like the vertical direction, or the direction that is perpendicular to the plane. And because one of them is negative, another one is positive, and you want to have a positive Poisson's ratio, we put a negative sign before this equation. Similar to that, we can define shear strain. As we learned before, shear strain is the change in the angle, and that is directly related to the applied shear stress. Tangent of gamma is equal to gamma if gamma is very small. And finding a relationship between shear stress and shear strain is similar to the Hooke's law. Shear stress, or ta, is equal to g multiplied by gamma. And here, gamma stands for shear strain. g is another constant parameter, which we call this modulus of rigidity. And the last property is shear stress, or ta. These equations are valid in the case that we have stress is acting in one direction. But we know that in a more complicated case in the real world, we might have situation where stresses are acting in three independent directions, like x, y, and z direction. I want to extend this concept into more general case, which we call this three-dimensional stress element. And we call these equations as generalized Hooke's law. Let's consider a general three-dimensional stress element. As you can see here, we have six independent stress components, three normal stresses, sigma x, stress in the x direction, sigma y, stress in the y direction, and sigma z. Also, we have three independent shear stresses. So in this case, I want to find a relationship between six independent stresses and six independent strains. To make it easier, let's consider the case that there is no shear stress. So we just want to talk about the case that we have normal stresses, sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z. I'm going to show this element for one of those stresses. Let me draw that here for you. That three-dimensional stress element, which is subjected to stress in the x direction. Sigma x would be E multiplied by epsilon x. And if I want to determine strain in terms of stress, that would be epsilon x is equal to sigma x divided by E. Okay? That's valid for this case that we have just stress in one direction. All right. Is there any other strain in this case? Yes, using the Poisson's ratio, we know that there will be strains in the perpendicular directions. Epsilon y negative nu multiplied by longitudinal strain, which is epsilon x. So that would be negative nu over e multiplied by sigma x. Similar to that, we can determine strain in the z direction, which is also a lateral strain that would have the same value. I just used the concept of Hooke's law for this simple case. Now I'm going to do the same for another three-dimensional stress element that is subjected to stress in the y direction. So again, in this case, we can say sigma y is equal to E multiplied by epsilon y. And epsilon y is sigma y divided by E. Epsilon in the x direction 
and Z direction are going to be the lateral strains and they are negative nu over E multiplied by stress in the Y direction. Okay, now let's extend this concept into stresses in the Z direction. Sigma Z is equal to E multiplied by Epsilon Z. Epsilon Z is Sigma Z divided by E and Epsilon X is equal to Epsilon Y is equal to negative nu over E Sigma Z. All right. Now I want to see what if I have all of these stresses acting on the element at the same time. How can I combine these stresses together? Let me write down epsilon x that we have obtained for each of those cases. How much is epsilon x from the first equation? This one. In that case, epsilon x was determined to be sigma x over e. Now, how much that would be from the second equation? Epsilon x from the second equation is negative nu over e sigma y. So I just copied that over here. And the last term would be epsilon x from the last equation. So we have determined strain in that direction, right? Now I'm going to simplify this equation to make it easier to work with. Strain in the x direction is 1 over e multiplied by sigma x minus nu sigma y plus sigma z. And that's it. That's what we call it as generalized Hooke's law. And that would give us strain in the x direction if we have normal stresses. Now I'm going to write down the other equations. We can prove that epsilon y would be 1 over e sigma y minus nu sigma x plus sigma z. And epsilon z is 1 over e sigma z minus nu sigma y plus sigma x. We have just proved the equations for generalized Hooke's law for three-dimensional case. I didn't prove the relationship between shear stress and shear strain, but that is very simple. They are related together by modulus of rigidity. Okay? So these equations are giving us the magnitude of strain in terms of stress. Now, what if I want to determine the magnitude of stresses in terms of strain? In that case, we can solve the equation in the reverse order, and then we would get these equations. So these are the equations that we have for determining stresses from strains. All right, this is the case that we have all of those stresses, like six independent stresses acting on three-dimensional element. There are two simpler cases that we generally work with them in mechanics of materials. One of them is called plane stress situation. What does it mean? So consider the case where we know that stress in one of the direction is zero, like this one. In this case, we know that stress in the z direction is equal to zero. And all other shear stresses associated with z are equal to zero. When do we have this case? Every time that you're working with a free surface, stress on that free surface is equal to zero. What does it mean? It means that I can simplify that three-dimensional stress element into a two-dimensional stress element. One of those components would be zero. And I would work with simpler case, which is shown here. This is what we call it plane stress situation. The other special case would be this one. In this case, we know that strain in one of those directions is equal to zero. And again, that would simplify the equations. Where do we have this case? Where the thickness is unlimited, when we have a very long thickness. Okay, now, given these equations, I want to solve some problems.